I'm Paul Dansback, and welcome to Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. In this session of Training Minutes, we're going to look at an electric-driven building fire pump. The building we're in happens to be a high-rise building. The purpose of the fire pump is to supply adequate pressure and water delivery to the upper floors of this building. So we're going to take a little walk around the pump room and talk about the component parts of this electric-driven fire pump. First, we're going to start off with our electric motor our horizontal shaft fire pump, and here is the main body of our fire pump. This is a centrifugal fire pump. Just like fire pumpers, building fire pumps have some gauges. And just like fire pumpers, there will be a suction side gauge and a discharge side gauge. The discharge side gauge is important to the fire service. Should there be a fire in this building, at some point in time, a firefighter should enter the fire pump room a, to determine if the fire pump is running, and B, to determine when the pump is running, what is the discharge pressure. If the fire department is supplying the building's fire department connection at a pressure lower than the discharge pressure, the fire department is not supplying this system. The fire department is merely churning their fire pump as they are not moving any water into the building's suppression system. Let's take a look at some of this building's fire suppression system's control valves. We're going to start with the first control valve where the water supply for the fire suppression system enters the building. The first control valve, if we close that control valve, we shut down the entire fire suppression system. This control valve is an OSNY valve. As we move further into the system, we encounter a series of valves arranged on the fire pump bypass loop. The purpose of a fire pump bypass loop is to allow water at street pressure to come into the building's system bypassing the building fire pump. We'll take a look at the next two valves. There is a valve on the suction side of the fire pump and there is a valve further down. In this case, it is a butterfly valve on the discharge side of the building fire pump. Those two valves allow the fire protection contractor to separate the fire pump from the system. Close the valve on the suction side close the valve on the discharge side and they can service the fire pump. They can remove the entire fire pump from the suppression system. Back to the bypass loop. With the bypass loop in place, when the fire pump is out of service, water can move around the fire pump in the bypass loop and supply the building sprinkler and standpipe system at street pressure. The fire department would be able to pump up the fire department connection. In this case, we see this four inch pipe. This four inch pipe is piped into the bypass loop. Any fire department connection piping on a building provided with a building fire pump has to be piped into the discharge side of the building fire pump. This arrangement of piping and valves will allow the fire department to supply the system when the building fire pump is out of service. Building fire pumps are provided with a fire pump controller. The purpose of the fire pump controller is to start the building fire pump. The fire pump controller senses a drop in pressure. For instance, if there's a fire in progress and two or three sprinkler heads open, the pressure on the discharge side of the fire pump will drop. The fire pump controller will sense that drop in pressure and automatically start the building fire pump. A couple of component parts that the firefighter should be aware of on the building fire pump controller is number one is the on-off switch. The on-off switch should always be in the on position. That tells us that this building fire pump is ready to go to work. Should there be a fire in this building, and as we talked about already, a firefighter should come in to determine if the pump is running. If the pump is not running, and the fire pump needs to run, or the incident commander desires the fire pump to be turned on, that every fire pump assembly is equipped with an emergency run switch. This emergency run switch, you would push the switch in and turn the handle and the fire pump will run. The emergency run switch overrides all the automatic start and stop functions of the building fire pump. That fire pump will run until someone comes in and disengages the emergency run switch. Typically, the fire service will encounter building fire pumps in high-rise buildings, warehouse occupancies, big box retail. Both the warehouse and big box retail 
especially buildings that have been constructed over the last 10 to 15 years, are typically provided with ESFR sprinkler systems or sprinkler heads. ESFR is an abbreviation for early suppression, fast response. Warehouse applications, big box retail, high rises, large sporting venues, healthcare facilities are buildings that are all typically going to be provided with a building fire pump. Pre-planning is the key. The fire service should understand what buildings in their response area are provided with building fire pumps. Pre-planning, building familiarization tours will go a long way in understanding the building's fire pump. Of critical importance to the firefighters responding to that building is the location of the building fire pump and understand how to start the building fire pump in the event the incident commander determines the fire pump should be running. I'm Paul Dansback and thank you for watching this session of Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. <laughs>